UF looked a lot better this week. And I know the opponent, but what's probably the most worrisome is that they look like they have a quarterback controversy. And if you're Billy Napier, you're really in a lose-lose situation. I don't know how he handles this, but let's talk about it. UF obviously embarrassed week one against Miami. I was in the swamp. I watched it. Um, we've talked about it. We, we've had out, we've had Ali on before and after, uh, fans of her channel, Gator fans in general, we're going to get Ali back from a peak inside Gators football, probably this week to talk about the A&M game, talk about this QB controversy, which I don't know if it's too much of a controversy or not, because I think Napier's probably just going to end up rolling with Mertz. I'll, I'll play my cards out there and, and give away my hand. But anyway, UF fans hit the subscribe button. I get it. I'm a null. I really try to be unbiased on this channel and give you my thoughts. First of all, let's give what we give you our thoughts. Lagway, absolutely phenomenal. 456 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, you know, part, part of that was a pop pass. So maybe not as like, not all through the air. I get it. But at the end of the day, yards are yards, stats are stats. Not going to take that away from the kid. He was phenomenal. And the passes he threw, obviously the, the play that everybody thinks about, the, the, the throw to Tank Hawkins, the one on the right side, was it to Mizell, I think, where he uh, stepped up in the pocket and just not the best mechanics when he did it, just kind of a kid making a play. Um, it reminded me, you know, UF fans are either going to love or hate this, but it reminded me of Jameis just doing something stupid and, you know, knowing that he was going to get the ball to his guy. So he didn't set up. He wasn't perfect mechanics, but he was like, dude, that ball is going to that guy and it is going to land in his bread basket. And it absolutely did dime of the night. It was one of the throws of the day, not just for lagway in all of college football. He was exciting. The team looked like they were thrilled to play for him. It, he was phenomenal. You can tell that he's going to be a really, really elite talent and Florida has to do everything they can to hold on to him. I don't know how the, the rumors seem like he's all tied to Billy Napier. And so what happens there? I don't know. Whatever the price is, whatever the pay payment is, if, if, if Napier goes, but you keep him, you got to you got to keep Lagway. I know people are out on Napier. I know that you're mad with him. I know that you think that he's not the guy and you want to move on. I don't know if Napier is worth if keeping Napier is worth keeping Lagway, I don't know, man. I, and I'm not trying to fire your coach, but keep it. You got to keep that kid. So whatever you do, he is that good. And as a Florida State, I look at the background. I don't want you to keep him, but he's legit. He's really, really good. I will say this. Obviously, you have to consider the opponent. You have to consider who you're playing. You have to consider the the um, the lack of pressure that Lagway had on him last night. Now, I, I don't necessarily mean – uh, external pressure, like the the pressure of just being a starting quarterback for the Florida Gators, just the the amount of actual pressure that that Sanford was able to apply, that will obviously be much different with A and M, who I think has a very good front four, front seven um, in totality. I think they have a very good defense. Um, although maybe there's a little bit of doubt cast on that after Notre Dame loses to Northern Illinois, um, which is a whole different story. Um, prayers up to Marcus Freeman. Um, It'll obviously look different with better defensive backs. You won't have guys running wide open. You won't have guys that have three and four steps on defenders. That's very clear, right? And so you do have to consider the opponent. I think UF fans are very aware of that. You guys aren't dumb. You know that Lagway is really, really talented, really, really good. You also know that you played the worst team on your schedule until maybe the last week of the season. We'll we'll see what Florida State looks like at that point. Um. So you do have to consider the opponent and Napier's got a tough choice, right? Do you, you know, Napier needs to do a couple of things, right? He he's already lost the fan base, but I think he could win them back and comment below. I mean, you have fans who you would start. I mean, let's, let's hear it. I, I know that the comments are going to be filled with lagway and that's what I would do too. Don't get me wrong. But I, if you, if you have an argument for merch, let's hear it. I'll try and make one on here, but I don't know how successful I'll be with it. Um, if you're, Billy Napier, you know that you, one, have to save your job, and two, you have to win games to save that job. And three, you got to keep the fan base. What little bit of the fan base you have right now? Because I think a lot of people are out on him. A lot of people are saying, like, let's move on. Most Gator fans that I know are, are done with him. And so it's a weird dichotomy. It's a weird situation to be in. If you give the job to Lagway... And that talent differential of Samford and AM is just so stark that you, what if he throws two picks in the first quarter? Well, then you got to go back to 
to Mertz, right? You have to go back to Mertz and try and take care of the ball and try and fight your way back in for a win. Or if you're down 14, do you have to keep Lagway in? Because you're like, well, Mertz ain't going to lead us back. You know, we we need a gunslinger that can go out there and make more plays. Well, if if DJ starts out poorly, is he going to play himself out of that against better competition? He still is a true freshman. He has been on campus for nine months now. And so you just kind of wonder, it's a very, to me, it's a very tricky situation. Lagway, obviously so much higher of a ceiling. Mertz, probably a little bit higher of a floor. He, he's probably not going to go out and make those true freshman sh- mistakes. I don't think that um, Mertz would look as bad against AM as he did against Miami. But I also think this is a, an incredibly tough situation for Napier. I don't think that he can... <sighs> It's tough to think, like, can he really win in this situation? Now, he can win if he has the benefit of hindsight, right? Well, if he knew that he was going to put Mertz in and Mertz go out and, and score three touchdowns and UF win 31-27 to 27 against a and then fine, that's good. If he knew that he was going to put Lagway in and go out and Lagway was going to throw three picks and they were going to lose the game, he'd, he'd avoid doing that. The problem is you don't know what's going to happen. And obviously the inverses of both quarterbacks could happen too. And so it truly is a tough, tough decision for Napier. I think he would be better off just going with Lagway. I think that probably buys him more time. It buys him more favor with the fan base. I think fans, and you have fans, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think you have fans are so over seeing the same vanilla play calling with uh, Mertz that they would rather see Lagway go out there and throw three picks and and four touchdowns or you know the offense actually move and look fluid and and him hit some big throws then they would rather see the conservative vanilla play calling with Mertz even if it meant you know I don't want to say even if it meant a loss because obviously you'd rather win than than anything. But I I I don't think UF fans are are on Mertz at all anymore. I think Lagway was too good, and it it creates a rough situation because if we're being honest with ourselves, if Mertz would have played last night, he would have looked really good too. Guys were running wide open. There would have been no pressure on Mertz both externally and in the game. Mertz would have looked really good too. And I think people would have had a different mindset. I think UF fans would say, well, it was just Samford. Go do it against AM. And that's a fine place to be in. We, we, we know that just beating um, Samford is not enough. But it was just the way that Lagway looked. It's the way that he set records last night in the swamp. How do you go away from that? I don't understand it. The bad news for Florida fans, I believe is that I think that Napier is going to go with Mertz. I think Napier is going to go with Mertz, see how he starts the game, and maybe, which I don't love this, maybe do the package thing where you, you put you know uh, DJ in here and there and play him here and there. I, I think that kills rhythm. I think that kills um, just bo- – I, I think that's bad for both quarterbacks. Just coaches love to do it. You know, they did it with – they did it with uh, – with uh, Richardson when he was there, and that was a different um, coach. But man, I I think that he's going to start Mertz. I think you guys are going to be pissed. Um, so let me know down in the comments what you think. Who do you, who would you start, and who do you think starts? Is it a quarterback controversy? I don't know how you call it anything but that. DJ Lagway absolutely phenomenal last night. He he was one of the performers of the weekend. I understand it was Samford. I understand the opponent. I understand the competition. I understand he's probably not going to go for 450 yards against AM or even against Mississippi State or against yeah, – I, I would be surprised if he did against UCF. I, I get it. But it still was really, really impressive. It was really, really impressive to see. UF obviously looked much better last night. I think that it was a good thing. Swamp was still pretty – Pretty crowded, you know. I don't know that it was it was as crowded as the Miami game, which makes sense. No visiting crowd essentially comes, but um, I, I thought they looked good. I thought Lagway looked good, and Napier's got a tough decision on his hands. Um, they need to find about five more wins, and I think you can do that. I think it's tough. It starts with winning this weekend. If they win this weekend, I think they can find a way to a bowl. If they don't, I think it's gonna be pretty tough to to find your way into a bowl. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, Gator fans. Again, I know the background. I know the shirt. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button if you like the objectivity. I think I'm pretty fair with this. If I'm wrong, I'm here for the feedback. So we'll have Allie on soon to talk about it as well. Appreciate you guys for tuning in to College Football Addiction.